when it comes to setting up a CNC machine, it's really important that the X and Y axis are square to one another. Otherwise, it'll never run properly. But just, how do you go about it? Well, stick around and find out. Hello fellow CNC nuts, and welcome. Today I'm going to answer one of the most common questions I get asked. How do you square up your X and Y axes on your CNC machine? If you don't get this right, the thing will never run properly. You'll never be able to cut a square. You'll spend the rest of your life cutting trapezoidal shapes. So uh, getting it square is really important. But this is no good on a machine this size. This is way too small. This is no good. I wouldn't trust this for square other than uh, basic carpentry. And anyway, there's nowhere to actually reference it to, to reference uh, to the other axes. So we're going to use a different method. We're going to use mathematics. Ah, uh, um, not very good with maths, eh? Not a problem. We're going to be using Pythagoras' theorem, something I learned when I was a youngster at school, and it's about the almost the only thing in mathematics that sort of really stayed with me, that and uh, uh, pi. But Pythagoras' theorem is relatively simple, but we're not going to go into that. We're going to break it down into one simple formula. All you have to remember is 3, 4, 5. The 3, 4, 5 triangle. It's used throughout the world by carpenters all over. It's a well-known way of making things square. Basically, if you have a triangle with one side three units long, one side four units long, and the other side five units long, where that three and four unit side meet will be 90 degrees. So we're going to use that basic principle to square up my machine. So to do that, I will need a ruler, uh, one probably a bit longer than this. The larger you make this, the more accurate it's going to be. We're going to need some sort of port that, uh, point that we can put into our spindle. Now, my original thought was I'll use this here, a V-bit. It's an engraving bit, but it's not very good. Engraving bits, the points don't spin at center. They tend to take a, an outside, so they scribe a circle, but they don't have a point in the center. So I could use a V-bit like this here, but it's a bit big and bulky. Uh, but it should be perfectly fine. The point should be right in the centre. Uh, but uh, I've opted for this here, a stick with a point on it. I've made this point in the spindle. I'll show you how I did that. And uh, this here will give a nice, accurate point. And uh, useful for killing vampires as well. So, let's get into it. I start by putting a piece of 12mm dowel into the collet of my spindle. Then, running at 6,000 RPM, I use a wood rasp to make the basic shape of the point. I then follow it up using a file to refine it further. And finally, I use some sandpaper to put the final point on it. OK, so how is this going to work? Well, imagine what you're seeing here point. is my right angle triangle. I've put a piece of tape on the table here and I've marked a little X there. And I brought my little dowel, so the point of it is right in the center of that X. I've set that as my origin point, X, Y, and Z, zero. That's just so I can easily return to this later on, and it gives me my starting point. So here's my starting point here. Now I'm going to drive them axis this way here down the table, four units. I'm going to drag the axis across this way, three units, and I'm going to mark where the end point is. Now then I'm going to take my ruler and I measure between the start and the finish and that should be five units long. Now because my table is reasonably large I'm going to define each unit as 200 millimeters. So four units by 200 is 800 millimeters long. So I'm going to come down here 800 millimeters. Three units across by 200 millimetres is 600 millimetres. So I'm going to then run the axis 600 millimetres across there. I'm going to mark where that point is at the end. Then I'm going to take my measurement ruler here and measure with those two points, and it should be five units long. Five by 200, 
a thousand. It should be a thousand millimeters difference between the start and end point. If that's the case, then I'm perfectly square. If it isn't, then I can move the axis slightly and rerun the test. When I finally get the correct answer, I know it's all square. So I've picked this point as an arbitrary point on my table. I'm just called it X and Y zero. And now I need to mark it. Now, if you want to stay sane, what I've done is I've got me a bit of tape and I've already put an X on it. It's 10 times easier to simply slide the bit of tape under the point and lay it down in the right spot than it is to try and draw exactly where that point is on the bit of tape. So, as a quick way of doing it, to keep you sane. So, next I enter the MDI command y minus 800 and that's going to bring the x-axis uh, the y-axis 800 millimeters this way here i can now take another one of my pieces of tape and just slide it under the point and line it up with where that point is next i need to bring this across so i'm going to enter the mdi command x 600 which will bring it 600 millimeters over this way here. And I can take my last piece of tape, slide down to the point, and put the X directly below the point. I can now raise the cutter and move the whole thing out of the way. Now you notice when I did the uh, run, I put an extra piece of tape in just down here. That was after the first movement. And what I wanted to do with that is just check that when I told it to move 800 millimeters, that it actually did. And that just checks the calibration of my axis. Because if that's not right, then of course none of this will work. So I can measure between the start point here and the stop point, and it's exactly 800 millimeters. So we're good to go there. Now, unfortunately, this ruler is too long to measure across the axis this way. So what I'm going to do is I've got a 600 millimeter ruler here. I'm just going to put them uh, measurement side to measurement side and just measure 600 millimeters. And both rulers are measuring the same. Uh, just something to be aware of if you've got uh, cheap steel rules. They may not have the uh, correct measurements on them. So if you're using two different rulers for this, just make sure both of them have exactly the same scale. So next, I'll measure across between those two, and then we can move on to measuring our diagonal. So my X and Y axis movement both check out, but when I check here, when I go from the starting point to the end point here, I'm measuring 999 millimeters, not 1,000 as it should be. So my axis is slightly off square. So now that I know it's not square, I also know which way I need to move the axis. If I leave that side of it uh, as it was, and just move that side, I can square it up a bit more. So it needs to come this way here towards the front of the table, just a little bit, one millimeter over that distance. So the best way for me with the rack and pinion drive to drive, move it backwards and forwards just fractionally, is I'm gonna take a spanner, put it on the rear shaft, of the stepper motor, it's got that flat on it so I can lock it to it. And with the e-stop uh, engaged so that it's no longer powered, I can now just move it fractionally like that. Just bring it forward a little bit, that uh, millimeter or so that I want. And now I'm gonna rerun the test. Hopefully this time it'll be right. Okay, well now that I've made that slight adjustment, I'm going to rerun the test, but I can take a bit of a shortcut this time. Last time I moved the axis 800 millimeters this way and then 600 millimeters that way. Well, I don't need to do that this time. I only wanted to do that so that I could take uh, a measurement of actual how much movement there was on each axis to make sure uh, that there was moving the right amount. Now that I've done that, I can use a different MDI command. This time I'm going to use a single MDI command y minus 800 x 600. I'm going to put them on the same line and basically 
the machine will just move diagonally to this point I can cut out the middleman. Now if things haven't moved on me when I go to origin point it should go back to my original X. I'll just quickly remove this from the table so I can place it when it's done. Okay, so that's in the right place. It's still directly over that little X I put there. So that means this side of the axis hasn't moved. Okay, so that's good. Next, I'm going to put the MDI command in. And that's going to bring it to the final point of our triangle. And I can reinstate my piece of masking tape. Okay, well now time for the big measure. Okay, well it's taken me three more attempts, but I finally got it spot on. And now my gantry is square, but that's not the end of it. It's right having it nice and square like it is now, but now you have to have a way of making sure it stays square. And for that, I'm going to use my hard limits. So my hard limits are really simple. It's nothing more than a piece of angle aluminium with a couple of bolts uh, running through it. And they just slot into the extrusion here. And I can adjust it to where I want. When the gantry comes forward and touches up against these here, it can't go any further. So if I set the one up on this side and the one on the other side up so that they're touching the gantry when I bring it forward here, then if I ever want to square it, all I have to do is t put it into emergency stop and to drag um, the axis forward until it touches both hard limits, and then I know my gantry is square. So I'm just going to gently bring the axis towards me, and just make sure that's out of the way. And I'm going to, first of all, just set it up to this limit here. So now I can take my piece of angle aluminium here, just gently put it up against the axis, and tighten up the bolts. I can now do the same on the other side. Now that my axes are all nice and square, I can make a couple of little cuts. I can run my cutter down this edge here, straighten that up, and run my cutter across this way here, across the front edge. That gives me two, a 90 degree angle in this corner here. Gives me a reference uh, mark here that I can use for setting my material on the table. Gives me a nice reference edge here I can use for uh, machining material longer than the table and also for setting material on the table. So that's something you might also like to consider with yours. Of course, if you're using uh, hard stops like mine and you have lead screws, you'd simply uh, crash the machine gently uh, into those hard limits and that will square the axis up as well, uh, which is how I used to do it when I had lead screws on this machine. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and can now get your X and Y axis all squared away. Just remember the larger you make that triangle when you're setting this up, the more accurate the final result will be. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about this here, why not follow the link in the description box below this video, it will be taken off to the write-up associated with it. Don't forget to check out my website www.cncnuts.com. All that remains for me to do is to thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.